Tony from Cassette Comeback. Yes, the real Tony. Bit of a shock for you here. So what's this all about? Why am I in front of the camera? Well, it's because I've got a little story to tell. I mean, you relate to cassettes and this video, but rather than you stare at the famous black chair, which I'm making a nice groove on with my eyes for you to look at in the next part of the video, I just want to have a little chat about something. And it's to do with cassettes and they're coming back and... Uh, and something became apparent to me recently. Now, I'm in my little home studio right now and I've been using Logic Pro for Apple for about... Oof, well, I used it before it was even Apple. I used it when it was on the PC before Apple bought it. But the bottom line is, I got to a point where my Mac could no longer really be used because it needed to update. It was on like OS X leopard or something and I needed to upgrade it I forget what it was on but I upgraded it recently to OS X High Sierra because that's the highest it can go because uh can't go to the right new one even though it's an i7 with 16 gig in it no no you, you've got to buy a new MacBook for that one it's time you you got rid of your old one you've had it long enough but anyway I upgraded it now when I came to upgrade Logic which is what I use for the music I upgraded that and then all of a sudden <gasps> Apple have deemed that you can no longer use 32-bit software synthesizers. Got to be 64-bit. Now, some of these I bought, and the companies that make them are not in business anymore, like uh, Lenar Digital Silent One. It's one I use a lot. Not in business. So I pay good money for these, and they're not cheap. Some will cost hundreds of dollars. And now I've got to either buy them all again, or upgrade them. Now this reminds me of the modern world that does my head in where you pay good money for something, you think you've got it, but you don't. You've got it until the manufacturers deem you've had it long enough now, time for some more money. So I said bugger this. And what I did was instead of buying more soft synths and upgrading them, I've gone back to hardware. Now software synthesizers, if you don't know, are like little plugins into your digital audio workstation. They sound good, I won't deny they sound good, but they're very easy to use, you just bring them up, click on them, select your presets, it saves all the settings nice and easy. Not like a hardware synthesizer where you need space for them, then you've got to get the audio in, then you've got to have the MIDI, and then you've got to send the MIDI back. They're a bit of a faff. However, I've got software synths that are like, you know, four or five year old, that's it, I can't use them anymore. I've got hardware synthesizers, uh, I'm using my tongue there, hardware synthesizers, they're knocking on for 40 year old, and you know what, yeah, I had to recap them, change the CMOS battery, reload in the, uh, the presets if they were dead, I mean look at this picture, this one actually I did it from tape on this Korg, but they still work like they did 30 years ago, they still make the same sound, they're not remotely nobbled. So I've got all my old hardware synths out, spruce them all up, put them back in the studio. I mean, have a look at this stack here. This is my uh, all-time favourite synth of all time. And that never went into storage of RSTI, but Roland D50, 80, 1987 that came out, the sound of the late 80s, early 90s. We've got the wonderful Nord Wave at the top. And then we've got this part over here, which I'm sitting in front of where I've treated myself to a new Behringer DeepMind 12, you know, a 12 voice all analog synthesizer for around 700 quid. And then we've got the Korg, um, what's it called? Not the Prologue, what's it called? Uh, the the Minilogue, that's it. You know, four voice all analog synthesizer from Korg for like 400 quid. And the thing is, these will work as long as I look after them. They'll outlive me. Whereas soft synths are disappearing. This is back to cassettes and physical audio media uh, versus streaming. I mean, you can stream now. Roland now do something called the Roland Cloud, which is basically you rent soft synths for $20 a month, but you never own them. So I said, bugger it. I'm going to go back to hardware synths and I'm going to stick with them because I know they're going to be there and still work no matter what and one day suddenly you're not going to turn around spending ages on the song and oh sorry no it's time you bought something new from us we've decided you can't have this anymore and I'm fed up of it so the song I'm going to use in this video has come from all these hardware synths 
no soft synths involved, all hardware, listen to how good it sounds. It's just a little ditty I put together to test that everything was working and that we could all play together nicely. So I'm going to use that in this video. So there we go, this is me. The only reason I don't do more videos like this is like, one, my man caves a tip. I mean, look, look how messy this is. I am not a tidy person, so I can't be bothered having a tidy studio because, well, I don't make any money off this. If I was doing this for a living and earning thousands and thousands a month, then I can take the time to have a proper studio and do multiple cuts and all this, but I don't. You know, it's all about the cassettes in this, and, and that's what I want to focus on. So now we're going to have back to normal. You're going to have a look at the nice big ice print I've made on this chair as we continue this video. Ooh, that crowd. Uh, can you see that? Lovingly made just for you. So, today's video is about a brand that, well, it's a bit overdue I did a video on them, and that is Scotch or 3M. And I wanted to wait because I wanted the right cassettes just to test, because to be honest, I don't want to be looking at this one, really. I mean, you know, the potty trap back in, this is where they, they backed the uh, the other side of the tape as well just to sort of like help it but over the years um well as you can see it hasn't really aged too well this one i mean I, let's try and do some winding on it Eey. i mean that you know i've tried using these these haven't held up well the shells are pretty cool you know but they are welded and uh you can't really do anything with them look at the um Look at these spindles as well. These spindles don't uh, hold up well. They're, they're actually metal spindles and yeah, they, they, these sort of cause all sorts of problems and sort of led along with this tape, the, uh, the Highlanders, you know, one with the, with there, the, yeah, no, this isn't the Highlanders, it's Dino Age, but again, it, they look cheap at the time. They... They don't look too bad now, but they're not really usable, these, anymore. Um, look at that. Cash and carry, 61 pence. That's not bad. If you think that 61p in a cash and carry back in the 70s, and we'll have to put that on top of that. But, yeah, I mean, these were the sort of Scotch cassettes now that sort of get a bad rep because they were actually made by 3M, and they haven't aged well at all, to be fair. You look at these compared to, you know, a TDKD from the same period. And I don't think these have been badly stored. I mean, you know, this one obviously came, you know, came from Germany. They bothered to label it, but these are not the Scotch cassettes we're going to be looking at today. These are the Scotch cassettes we're going to be looking at today. I'm going to start with one of my personal favourites, which is this one, the Scotch XS2. And this is, I mean, it says a 1988 Olympic Games here, so we can guess this probably comes from around 87-ish. Um, but these were around for a bit earlier. But uh, this is a really, really underrated tattoo. I really like these tapes. So it's with joy that we look at this one. The other one I'm going to look at is this one, which is very late on from Scotch. I mean, whereas this is, you know, one of the earlier ones, we've got one that's a much later one, which is a, a 3M tape, and this is a Studio Master, and this is the Type 2, and I'm doing this because there's not a lot of, of of stuff on this on the internet, so I thought that was worth looking at. And the third one, which we're going to look at, is this one, the, the Black Watch, and this is the metal one, and it's the only one I've got, and I had to get it from a friend in America, and... <laughs> <laughs> just get over with it. it's like it's like ripping a band-aid off you know what i mean it's like just rip the plaster off and the pain goes away quickly okay there we go the black watch so i didn't even show you the back of the pack before i even ripped it open so let's let's have a look i just needed to get it off because i knew it was coming and it was gonna hurt so let's have a look what it says on the back um <laughs> designed for the ultimate recording extended metal part particles yep hmm reckons you should record this at plus eight and you know why because it says well i'll just tell you why can you can you look at this and see who made this look at the hubs come on 
Hubs, if you haven't watched me Hubs video, watch it. Who made this? Yep, this is a Denon. Oh, what a handsome cassette that is. I love Denon shells. Yeah, this is a lovely looking cassette. However, I've got to say, this, this shell looks a bit SKC to me, I must say. But uh, it's a lovely looking tape with them red hubs. Mmm. Let's just wind it on a bit. Oh yes, very black shiny metal tape there. So, yeah. I've wanted to try one of these for a while because um, I haven't really got many Denon metals and I knew these were Denon. So, the 3 and Black Watch, yeah. So, that's one we're going to look at. Let's have a see what else it says inside. Lifetime warranty. Shall not be liable for any direct inconsequential damage. Yeah. So, that's... That's a 3M black watch. I look forward to taping on that. Yeah, because if you look even the, the retainers here, these are very Denon light retainers, which throws a bit of a spanner on, on this next tape I'm going to look at because, right, this is the XS2. Now, we'll look at the back end. You can see it's printed badly on top and it's just on the wrapper, but it says made in Republic of Korea. So, with Scotch's past, I would like to think this is either Saihan or SKC, but uh, let's have a look. Yep, premium quality will give you the ultimate in high bias chrome switch, a dual layer cobalt modified ferric oxide formula. So, this is a double coat ferric cobalt, you know, like the SAX and the Denon HT7. It's a double coat, it says it right there dual layer cobalt so let's open this one up which I do quite happily because I actually really really like these I mean I had never used them in the day and I got some st in for stock and there was a damaged one so I thought I might as well open it and um, I really really like these now trying to determine where these come from I've opened it up to look at the hubs and the hubs give no clues because they're just regular hubs now if it was SKC I would have thought that um, you would have had the three hold hubs, but that's a bit of a misnomer because not all, all SKCs are, and this is pretty early on. Um, the little gap there, where it normally would say something like Japan or something, it, the shell, I, I don't know where the shell comes from. It's very nice looking though, this now. I mean, with the brushed aluminium type sticker, it's trying to mimic, I think, the Maxells from this sort of era, you know, the 85, 86 Maxells, trying to maybe mimic the look of the XLI with the sort of brushed aluminium finish. But I think this is a handsome tape, but I think this is a really good sounding tape. And if I was to hazard a guess, I'd say this is early Saihan. I really would. Um, unless, as some people have said, at this time, uh, 3M cassettes made by Denon. Because if you look at the retainers of both of these, they're the same sort of star shape. And I know that Denon made, um, I think it was the XSM metal. So I don't know if, I, saying on the back Made in Republic of Korea doesn't say Denon to me, but if I was to have a guess, I'd say this was a, an early Saihan, and it's the best sounding Saihan I've, I've ever used. So yeah, we're going to look forward to this one. Say the back of the, we've shown the back, that one, you know, don't touch the tape, and yeah. So we'll put that one in there. And the third one we're going to look at is this, which is a late one, which... I'm looking at because basically there's very little info on this one because um, when I tried to find it I couldn't find it so I like the professional sort of look of this without the blurb and if you look at the J card you know it's just you know you write on the front what it is studio master cassette maybe to give to the people who were making recordings in your studio in the day and then they wanted something to listen in the car on the way home. The lights, yeah, again, a made in Korea, this one. But I'm pretty sure this is an SKC. Because if we look, can we see sideways on the hubs there? It's got the SKC three hole design on it. So it's not a pure chrome. SKCs do have a penchant for doing pure chromes. But this is a very black ferro cobalt. 
So I imagine the formulation on this is um, the same as the SKCQX. And I've just noticed something there. Let's just open these up again. The design isn't exactly the same, but the pattern is. And remember the little box? So I'm going to say, actually, then, this is probably actually an SKC, but without the usual SKC hubs, because the shells on these two are very similar. And like I say, unless, I don't know, they bought bookshelves from somewhere, but this is definitely an SKC with them holes. Yeah, these look very similar, very similar. So, yeah, that would make sense, because like I say, it sounded, this sounds better than any Saihan I've ever had. But uh, if it's an SKC, then yeah, that would make sense because SKCs to me never had a bad one. So, enough waffling about these particular 3M Scotch cassettes. Let me uh, take you over to what should we use today? Um, let's use a Revox again. I like, you, you know, the, the thing about, um, you know, when I got the Revox, I was on which I like better, Revox Dragon, Revox Dragon, Revox Dragon. And I said, it doesn't matter because I've got them both and they're both fantastic. Turns out I use a Revox more than I use a Dragon. Maybe it's because it's prettier and I can see the tapes going round in it and the auto bias is just brilliant and I don't have to faff about auto biasing it, but uh, we're going to use a Revox again today on these three and we're going to use this new tune which I've just made on my analogue equipment. Sorry, my uh, hardware sims, many of which are analogue. All right, let's go try them out. Okay, so I've got the XS2 all biased up in the Revox. I'm going to play this tune I've been banging on about, which will no doubt come as a disappointment because it ain't a masterpiece. But I've made sure, you know, it's got a lot of bass in it, it's got a lot of treble, and it's got mids as well. So hopefully it'll give these tapes a good workout. Uh, I haven't actually got a name for it because I only made it yesterday, so uh, there's no name for it. I don't have any plans to release it or anything. So it was just, like I say, a bit of fun to test out all my hardware since to make sure they're all working. So... Let's have a listen to it anyway, and I'm going to run this at about plus four, which is where I like to run a nice ferrocobalt type two. So let's have a listen.
sounded pretty good to me that very very nice type two like i say i really like these i like the way they look i like the way they sound yeah really good so let's go from one type two to another let's see what this sx90 sounds like which is like i say an skc and if this is based on the qx formula which it probably is then chances are it's gonna be pretty good i'm gonna try and run it at four as the uh, as I just did with the XS2. What do you think of the tune? I hope you liked it because uh, you're gonna hear it twice more before this video is finished. So uh, if you didn't like it, apologies. It's it's probably best you you skip to the sum up right now. Okay, beep beep beep. Right, we're ready to go. Let's try it again. Yowza. Like I say, out of all the tape makes, underrated SKC number one. That sounded fabulous to me. I think that even sounded better than the XS2. I mean, there is 10 years difference between the tapes, but yeah. I can imagine this being used in a studio to knock copies out for people. That sounded really good. Now, this one. Now, I've just had a thought while I've been waiting to uh, get to this one it's this they say run it at plus eight yeah now i take the vol sorry the sewer straight out of the the deck through the headphone and the phone volume here is not like a little dial where i can do it incrementally it's up or down and the problem is that if i drop this any further it's going to be really quiet however if i crank the input to plus eight it's going to distort the audio where i'm recording it on my recorder so um i don't know what to do for the best so let's just enjoy this i'm going to put this in i mean if you saw there the 
the studio master had a cheeky peek at plus six at some point, so I'm just going to calibrate this up and stop waffling. Let's just get this uh, calibrated up while I waffle on. So that had a cheeky peek at plus six. So I, let's run this Denon, uh, sorry, this 3M black watch at plus six. So I'm, I'm going to crank it just a little bit and then I'm sure we'll appreciate how good the sound of this one is. So you're going to hear that tune again for the third time, but this time on the 3M Black Watch. Incidentally, Alan, over in the States, my good friend, you know who you are. Thank you for getting me the Black Watch. Much appreciated, because I, I don't think they sold them in Europe. At least uh, I don't know anyone that's seen one, or I certainly never saw one, because they were always targeted as a high-end tape. So, enough waffling. Let's listen to how the Black Watch does. It's a den on metal. What did you expect? So, the sad fact seems to be that, a bit like Memorex, the best Scotch 3M cassettes were not made by Scotch or 3M. This one, I think maybe I was a bit cruel to it because it did say plus eight on the wrapper but plus eight at what scale? Because as we know, scales are different on different decks. It was quite happy at plus six on the Revox. Plus eight, I was sensing a bit of distortion in the bass. But other than that, yeah, looks superb, sounds superb. Very rare and expensive. Maybe one for the collection. Absolutely, beautiful. Red hub, it's so simple Then red hubs make it. If they were white hubs, would this look as special? Mm, maybe not. The thing is, red hubs probably cost exactly the same amount of money to make as white ones. Hmm. The XS2, like I say, 
performed as good as I thought it would. I've used plenty of these. I really, really rate these. I think they're a great alternative to uh, the SA and the SAX. Double coated. Yeah, lovely. But this was a standout for me. This was a surprise because I genuinely have never recorded on one of these before. And like I say, SKC QX tape, it's got to be. But to me, it didn't sound worse than the XS2. It sounded just as good, if not maybe just a little touch better. I mean, I know it's a fresher tape, but these are really good. Um, I'm going to enjoy recording some proper music onto that for that guff I make. But there we go. Some 3Ms that are all top-notch, unlike, you know, yeah. So, one last thing, um, I'd like to say thank you very much to all of you who listen to my radio show, and if you look here, um, it's got a 60-second worldwide in the pop charts on Mixcloud, which really means something to me, so thank you very much for listening I do appreciate it. Maybe some of you could just leave a little comment in, in Mixcloud afterwards. That would be great. Um, oh, and the other thing is, that song from this video, Bing, I'm finally releasing it. It comes out on Friday the 18th of October on all streaming platforms. It's this one. So if you want to get a listen to it properly just just you'll find it on spotify and it'll trickle into tidal and itunes and everything there so you wanted it you got it nothing else i try and keep you all happy so thanks a lot for watching please like and subscribe if you haven't already and until next time happy taping bye bye